Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome. So far we have seen 5 meta heuristic algorithms, teaching learning based optimization, particle sum optimization, differential evolution, genetic algorithm and artificial bee colony optimization. So before moving into constraint optimization, we thought we will compare all the survival strategies and the variation operators which we have discussed in this phi technique. So we thought to put it in a consolidated form so that it is easier for you to refer back and also if you are planning to design new algorithms, you can make use of this revision. So first we will be looking into the variation operators. So variation operators are used to generate new solutions from the existing solutions. So in TLBO, new solutions were generated either using the teacher phase or in the learner phase. Right? So in the teacher phase, we will get one solution and in the learner phase, we will get one solution. In teacher phase, we will use the solution XI to generate the new solution X new. Right? So XI is the current solution for which we are generating a new solution. R is random number between 0 and 1. Right? So this has to be 1 cross D where d is the number of decision variable, x best is the best solution in the population, x mean is the mean of the population and teaching factor is either 1 or 2. Remember it is not between 1 and 2, it is either 1 or 2 and teaching factor is a constant, is a scalar value 1 cross 1 irrespective of the dimension of the problem. So that is how we will be generating a new solution in the teacher phase, whereas in the learner phase we will be generating a new solution by selecting a partner from the population. So if we, if we are generating a solution uh, for xi, the solution xi, we need to select a partner from the population. Right? So one of these equations we need to uh, use. So if the fitness of the ith member is less than fitness of the partner, then we will have to use the first equation, else we will have to use the second equation. Again here r is a random number, it has to be between 0 and 1 and this is also 1 cross d. This is how we will be generating new solutions in teaching learning based optimization. In particle swarm optimization, we had to update the velocity of the particle first, then we had to determine the position. So for determining the velocity in t plus 1th generation, we will have to use the velocity of the th generation w, c1 and c2 are user defined parameters. R1 denotes random numbers between 0 and 1 and it has to be of the dimension 1 cross d. So for every decision variable, we will have to generate one random number. Same thing with R2, this is also 1 cross d. Xi is the particle position for which we are updating the velocity. P best is the best solution which was obtained for the ith particle so far. right? So that is P best and G best is uh, the global best of the entire population. So remember this is not G best of i but only G best. right? So once we find out the particle velocity, we can update the position. So x of i of t plus 1th iteration is of th iteration and t plus 1 velocity obtained in the t plus 1th generation. So here this is how the variation operator is used to generate a new solution. In differential evolution, for every particle i, we had to find out the donor vector. While determining the donor vector, we had to select three random solutions. Right? So this random solution should not be the same member for which we are determining the uh, donor vector. f is a scalar value right? respective of the uh, number of decision variables, it is just a scalar value known as scaling factor and it is a constant which is between 0 and 2. So once we determine this donor vector, then we will have to get the trial vector. right? So trial vector, the values of the trial vector will either come from uh, the donor vector or the target vector using these conditions. right? So here PC denotes the crossover probability. And this delta is a randomly generated integer variable between 1 and d. Right? This ensures that at least one member is copied from the donor vector to the uh, trial vector. In differential evolution, this is how we employ variation operators 
to generate new solutions. Here we have discussed only binomial crossover. You can look into the previous videos to see the exponential crossover also. In genetic algorithm, we had to uh, generate this parameter beta. So, this beta has to be generated for every decision variable, right. So, as many decision variables are there, that many random numbers we need to generate between 0 and 1. If the random number is less than or equal to 0.5, we update the beta using this equation. Here, eta c is a user defined parameter, right. So, once we calculate beta, uh, either using this part or using this part, we can calculate the two offsprings, right. So, over here, p a dash and p b dash denote the parents. So, in uh, for generating even one offspring, we need two solutions, uh, which are the parent solution, which we had found from the uh, mating pool, right. For this crossover to happen, uh, we need to select another random number, right, uh, which has to be less than the crossover probability. So, if we have a problem with uh, d decision variables, then we will have to generate d plus 1 random numbers between 0 and 1. The first random number will decide whether we will do crossover or not. If we decide to do crossover, if this condition is satisfied, then we will have to generate the additional d random numbers to find out the beta values. Once the beta value is found out, we can generate the two offspring using these two equations. Right? Similarly, for uh, mutation, uh, we need to generate uh, first one random number between 0 and 1. If that happens to be less than uh, mutation probability, then we need to undergo mutation right, else mutation is not to be performed. If this condition is satisfied, then we need to generate additional d random numbers between 0 and 1, right. So, if those random numbers are less than 0.5, we need to use this equation uh, to determine the delta, else we need to use this equation to determine the delta. Eta m again is a user defined parameter. Similar to SBX crossover, in polynomial mutation also, we need to generate uh, d different random numbers, so that we get d different deltas. Right. Once this delta is obtained, we can calculate the new offspring using this equation. In artificial bee colony optimization, the equation uh, which is used to generate a new solution uh, is this, right. So, the same equation is used in employed bee phase as well as in onlooker bee phase, right. So, this equation is same. Unlike the four other techniques, right, wherein all the variables were changed. So, for example, if we look into this, so if we, if I have a three variable problem, 289, let us say xr1 is 289, let us say scaling factor is 0 0.8 and the other two solutions are let us say 653 minus 279, right. So, all the variables would get changed, all the variables are modified to get this vi. Since vi is changing, most likely the trial vectors will also be having many values from vi, right. So, it is not like we will be changing only one value, whereas in artificial bee colony optimization, right, we will be deciding on which variable to change. We will be changing only one variable, right. So, here if we have solution, let us say 234 and the partner solution is 497, then first we will have to decide which is the variable that we are going to change. So, that, that j variable is to be randomly selected. So, between 1 and 3, we will have to randomly select one variable, right. So, let us assume that we are selecting the third variable, right. So, this 2, 3 will remain constant. So the only this 4 will get changed according to this uh, equation, right. So, here again uh, xp is a randomly selected partner, j is the randomly selected decision variable and phi is a random number between minus 1 and 1. Right? Uh, so, that is unique about artificial bee colony optimization when compared to uh, the other 4 algorithms that only one variable is changed over here. And then in onlooker b phase, uh, the e variation operator is same, only thing is that we will have to check this probability. So, if this condition is satisfied, in that case, that particular onlooker b explores the ith food source, right. The equation that we use to generate new solution is similar to what we used in employed b phase, right. So, Whereas in scout B phase, we randomly generate a solution, right, between the lower bound and upper bound. Remember again in scout B phase, uh, we were generating only one new solution, right. So, for every solution, we had to keep track of the trial vector. This trial vector denotes as to how many times the solution got an attempt to generate a new solution, but failed to generate a better solution than itself, right. So, if there are five solutions which exceed this limit, like again limit is a user defined parameter, if 5 solutions exceed this parameter limit. So, let us say if the trial for 5 solutions are 8, 9, 7, 3, 2, uh, 12. 
and the limit is let's say is 6 right so in that case since this solution has the maximum number of failures we will be updating the solution corresponding to the 12 failures right so only one new solution is generated so this slide shows all the uh, variation operators put in one place uh, for the five algorithms which we have discussed. Given this, you can now think of developing your own variation operator uh, which can be used to develop a new algorithm. So now that we have discussed the variation operator, let us quickly see how the survival strategies differ from one algorithm to the other algorithm. Right? So consider this case uh, wherein let us say this is the set of solutions that we have and these are the set of solutions which get generated at some point of time in the algorithm. Right? So these are old solutions, these are new solutions. So this is the decision variable, let us say this is a two variable problem. So we have x1 and x2 and this is the fitness function value corresponding to 3 and 1. Assume that there is some objective function for in which if we substitute x1 is equal to 3 and x2 is equal to 1, we get a fitness function value of 10. Right. So, here we have these 5 solutions and their corresponding fitness function. Similarly, in new solutions, let us say these 5 solutions get generated 4, 3, 1, 2, 4, 2, 1, 0 and 3, 1 and this is their corresponding fitness function value 25, 5, 20, 1 and 10. Broadly, we employed 3 different type of survival strategies. The first one is the greedy strategy. So, in greedy strategy what we did is like we compared fitness of this first solution with the fitness of the first new solution. So, between 10 and 25. 10 is better, right? So, we took that. So, uh, between 26 and 5, 5 is better. So, we took this 1, 2. Right? Between 18 and 20, uh, this 18 is better, right? So, we took that 18 and the corresponding solution is 3, 3. So, that is taken. Between 4 and 1, the solution 1 is better and their corresponding solution is 1, 0. So, that is what we retain. Right? And between 4, 1 and 3, 1, the fitness is 17 and 10. So, 10 is better. Right? So, we take uh, 10 over here right? and the corresponding solution. So, this greedy strategy we employed in TLBO. Remember in TLBO what we did was uh, the first solution underwent teacher phase and uh, we generated a new solution. If the new solution is better, we took that solution into the population. Same thing we did in the learner phase also. Right? So, in those cases, we were using a greedy strategy. Right? So, in TLBO, we use greedy strategy. Similarly, in ABC also, we did the same thing that the first B undergoes the employed B phase. If it generates a better solution, that better solution is taken into the population. Right? So, employed B phase as well as the onlooker B phase, we employed this greedy strategy. Right? In scout B phase, we did not employ this strategy. Right? We generated a new solution and whether it was good or bad, it was taken into the population. Right? Um, similarly, in DE, uh, we used this greedy strategy. Right? So, we had, let us say we have 20 solutions, we generate 20 more solutions in DE, compare the first old solution with the first new solution and whichever is better was taken into the new population. Right? So, this greedy strategy is the one that we uh, widely used in three algorithms. Right. The other strategy is mu comma lambda strategy. In this mu comma lambda strategy, the new solution is always taken into the population. Right? We do not care whether it is better or not. Right? Uh, it is always taken into the population. So, this if you remember, we did it in particle swarm optimization as well as the scout phase of ABC. So, uh, what we basically did was, let us say if these were the old solution 10, 26, 18, 4 and 17 and these are the new solutions 25, 5, 20, 1 and 10. Right? We uh, did not take the old solutions or we did not do a comparison between 10 and 25, 26 and 5, 18, 20, 4, 1, 17, 10. We did not do that comparison. We directly took the new set of solutions. Right? So, here if you see this is identical to the new solutions. Right? So, this is known as mu comma lambda strategy. So, this we had used in particle swarm optimization as well as scout phase of ABC. And then we had this mu plus lambda strategy wherein we combined all the solutions and we used this only in GA. right? So, here what we did was we have this 10, 26, 18, 4, 17 and this new solutions 25, 5, 20, 1 and 10. So, we had 5 old solutions, we generated 5 new solutions. So, out of this 10 solutions, we had to select 5 best solutions. So, what we did is we selected the 5 best solutions. So, 1, 4, 5, 10, 10. 
Right. So, this is what we did in mu plus lambda strategy. So, these are the three strategies uh, which we have seen in different algorithms. So, here as you can see for example, in e ABC one phase we employed greedy strategy and in another phase uh, in the scout B phase we employed a mu comma lambda strategy. So, similarly when you are designing an algorithm you can choose to incorporate any one of these strategies or a combination of these strategies or you can even come up with your own strategies. So, that concludes this session. In this session, we basically revised the survival strategies and the variation operators uh, which we came across in these 5 algorithms. Thank you.